All right, and we're back with an all-new show. Listen, you know, I just come off the cusp of uh, hosting the uh, Baddies ATL reunion for Zeus Network with Tamar Braxton, and it was so crazy that there was only one woman the entire show that everybody hated and wanted to fight, and it was the person that actually gave me the job, Natalie Nunn. Natalie. Yes! Yo, I had so much fun hosting the reunion. Thank you so much for uh, thinking of me. I mean, you came and I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, Jason's the perfect person for this job. Like, he's messy. He gonna get the tea. He gonna ask all the questions that everyone's thinking at home. And that's the point of it. This is bad girls. Like, what? This is the baddies. Like, we need all of that. And so, but they was mad at you. <laughs> they was mad at you. That's what I understand. Listen, when I first got there, I told producers, I don't want to meet any of the baddies in person. I already know Nally and I know Tanisha. I don't want to meet the other baddies because I want to have an organic experience meeting them for the first time when they got on the stage. And right. um, what I want to do really quick is just show you a little bit about what happened when the show literally first started. Take a look. From the beginning, at the conversation, but, but I just she was the one who told piece. me everything about you. That's perfectly And I had no fun. idea. I actually... Girl, That's... I know you lied. <laughs> Girl, you know, hold on, hold on, you hold don't on, sit down uh, 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 so uh, 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 so rude. Judy. It's COVID and I don't, uh, hepatitis, I hepatitis. Yeah, I don't I know. I love, I'm so sorry about that. What, what was that? I mean, I didn't even know Judy at the time, and nor did she know me, but she thought it made sense. Because if you pick up my drink and you sip my <laughs> shit, it's on, on site. Like, I don't know anybody in real life who grabs someone's drink and just starts drinking their and then puts it back down and just like, oh, I'm sorry. Huh? Like, y'all don't even know each other. Even if I did know you, bitch, don't touch my drink. So, so now, Judy, I've, I've learned that the baddies, the, the baddies fans really love Judy. They have this weird relationship with her where she's been, you know, a figure that they've talked about. I didn't know that she was just that out of control. Is that Judy that I saw that day? That is Judy. She's like the little sister who will just go in your closet, grab your clothes if you're the big sister, wear the to school, and then rip your shit and bring it back, put it in your closet, and act like she never wore your And she's been doing that for years. She, was, she used to take girls' cigarettes in the house. Bitches wanted to fight her over cigarettes. She would just sit in bitches' vanity chairs on the show, just start using their lashes. Bitches wanted to beat her ass over eyelashes. And then she'll sit there and go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I'm like, so what? So let's talk about, you know, you executive produced the show. How did it all come about where you and Tanisha linked up and brought all these baddies back together again? Oh, it was a hot rotisserie mess, like what Tanisha would say. We did not see eye to eye. We fought and had the internet in an uproar. I came on your show last and went in on Tanisha, like, about the show before we even started filming. It was, I wanted to bring the bad girls back. Um, Tanisha was like, I want to bring them back, but I want to bring them back in a better way. Like, But I'm like, girl, even if we were on a mother resort and island, we finna be fighting. Like, it doesn't matter where we are. Because her idea was, we'll go on vacation and we'll all have fun and we'll do yoga in the morning and meditation in the midday. Girl, these bitches will have a whole resort lit up, okay? <laughs> like, it and, the, and the fans, what I've grown to learn from the baddies, they don't want to see that. Like, these yeah. people, the, I have never seen a fan base be so rabid about wanting to see people beat each, beat each other up more than the baddies fan base. Is that accurate? Yeah. It's accurate, and then they get mad when we do fight, and then they get mad if we don't fight. So it's almost just like, y'all just need to let us be us. It's because at the end of the day, like, we will fight over hair and makeup, but then if a bitch says some other stupid, crazy ass shit, we're at, we we'll be able to get past it. It's so up and down. It's so wishy-washy. It's too many girls in one club with so many different personalities. That's what the it is. Yeah, big personalities at that. So speaking of big personalities, how do you and Tanisha coexist as baddies that everybody know and talk about and two of the biggest baddies in the show and then also as co-EPs working together? Well, like I said, Tanisha and I- we, I get confused. Like, do you guys like each other? Because I, sometimes I can't tell. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> 
I can't, I don't know either. Like I'll be on my way to New York for her event that and she's having and I'm going to support. And while I'm boarding my flight, the bitch is like, and I hope she knows when she gets here, I with her, don't cut. I'm like, I don't even know what the f is going on half the time. Like I can't keep up. Every girl slides into each other's DMs and just starts messy ass drama. They, they'll they say it's the fans and it's really like, this bitch said something about her, told her I said this, said I did that, or she said this. It's like, it doesn't stop. It's literally a mess all the time. Is, is Tanisha somebody that you trust? I mean, can you trust her? I mean, I do like with Tanisha in the sense that like she might be the only one from the franchise that like when it comes down to the business side of it we can see eye to eye yes yeah, um, I don't trust after what I've been through with Baddies ATL and the recording conversation and the bitches just like making up unlimited like lies that I have never I'm like bro you didn't went way too far now it's put me in a very awkward situation where like I really, I'm going to have a hard time trusting a lot of these girls moving forward. Like, mm. just in the sense of like, bitch, you, you, we cannot talk on the phone. We can't text. All of our conversations have to be through Zoom, record. Like, I just don't know what I'm getting with these bitches anymore. It's just crazy. Well, speaking of that, you showed up to the reunion in, um, you addressed the fight. You had cornrows, tennis shoes. You had everything that a girl that I know from my hood would be wearing when she's showing up to brawl. Did you come there with the intention to fight or did you come there with the intention to be prepared in case somebody wanted to fight you? Yeah, so I've never been the fighter, Jason, on the show. Even though it does seem like I'm always in some shit in all my seasons, like I don't really like, I'm not there to be like, yeah, and I'm gonna knock your head off, bitch, and run up on somebody. Like I don't really, that's not really the Natalie way. But if the bitches are saying they're not me and that there was a leaked audio from one girl da, 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 then bitch i'm coming prepared like i'm not you know i'm not I'm, first of all i'm i'm going to always defend myself so if you swing bitch it's going to be a brawl but i'm like well sh bitch i'm gonna have my hair how it's supposed to be because there ain't no one else gonna be snatching my wig off like we're not doing all that yeah okay so we got to the reunion and literally as my car pulled in they came to my trailer and said have you seen everything on social media i'm like of course we've seen it all sarah who was on the show you all had a physical confrontation um uh, right you guys got into it on the show well, you, hell, not physical but we've uh, we've had a lot of exchange words on baddies atl throughout very the series heated, very heated experience okay heated. so so she had released all these audio clips of you prior to the reunion and then decided not to show up. Uh, let me go through one of the audio clips. This was one of the clips where she recorded you privately saying something about Sydney Starr. Take a listen. What are you guys doing with Sydney? Trash. <laughs> that like that's, that's the first one out the door. <laughs> Trash. That's why I'm just letting everybody just have their moment for a second. It's almost over. We're like three episodes away. So in that clip, you were having a conversation with her that you thought was private. All these clips were what you thought were private conversations. And then you called Sydney Star trash. Uh, first, I want to know what was your reaction to finding out that you were being secretly recorded? And then secondly, why did you say that Sydney was trash? So, yeah. Sarah was calling me for weeks while the show was going on, complaining about the way she was looking edited wise. And she was just kind of like, you know, um, Natalie, as someone that you've known the longest from Bad Girls Club, I would feel like you would make me look better. And I'm like, bitch, I'm not editing the show. I'm just an EP on the show. Like I'm not in the editing room. I'm not, I don't have control over what is airing on the episodes. So she began to record my conversations and over the weeks when the episodes were airing, Sarah was, she had, Sarah had got into it with Sydney. She had got into it with seven on the show. She had got into it with all the girls. So every week when she would call me about one of them, I would have to try my hardest as an executive producer to keep Sarah on board. Like we needed her at the reunion. We needed her to just continue to participate in promoting the series. And so when she would call me, she would be like, and look what Sydney did on this week's episode. I'm like, yes, girl, I get it. She's trash. Don't worry. You'll have your final say at the reunion. And so as anybody that works in the TV industry behind the scenes, 
the peep, the girls or whoever's on the show, they're complaining nonstop about whatever the f is going on on the project. So I had to try my hardest to keep Sarah like on board and in the sense of wanting to participate still because she was complaining off of episode one. Wait, like it started. Are, are, so are you saying that watching the reunion and seeing how hard it was for me to keep us together for a couple of hours was kind of an indication of what you had to go through the entire season? The entire season. And it was every day, Jason, she would call. At one point, we started all going live, and I was like, listen, Sarah has been calling me, and then I would add all the girls in the live. And, like, it was just to the point where, like, we're not going to keep dragging me into the middle of it. And so they were, Sarah's crying on the live. Janelle's saying I didn't mean to say. It was just nonstop. And so I finally was like, bitch, look, if you don't like these hoes, when you get to the reunion, say your piece, fight whoever the you want to fight, but just bring your ass. She was recording me secretly like a snake ass bitch that the fuck she is and started releasing the audio, but never wanted to release what she was saying in the audio. So it was just sounded like me just talking to myself like, bitch, you was the one calling me, complaining, talking about each one of these girls. And I was just trying to agree with you or sometimes disagree with you, but tell you, don't worry. When we get to the reunion, you can say your piece. And it just went left she tried her hardest to make it seem like i was like just talking about all these girls don't like none of them and just leaked audio well and she was basically from what you were saying at the reunion she was gaslighting you into these conversations and then releasing your portion to make the all the girls hate you right period and i told the girls if you guys want to be stupid enough to like fall right into Sarah's trap, then let's go. Like I'm not not coming to my reunion. I'm the EP of the show. I will be there prepared for whatever the y'all bitches want to do. So when she started like releasing the sh everybody was kind of questioning like, well, why'd you say that? Why'd you say that? Well, bitch, you guys know why I said it because it went on for weeks. Sarah did not stop with the complaining. Like it went on and on. I was calling them. I was connecting calls. And so I don't think any of them were completely shocked. Matter of fact, none of them bitches are shocked because they all sit on the phone and talk about everyone all the time. They just didn't get recorded and their didn't get leaked because every single one of the girls from the Bad Girls Club talked about another one from the show. But the only difference was Sarah snaky ass recorded me and released it and acted like she wasn't saying nothing. Well, who talks about who that we don't know? <laughs> Listen, I just had, Jason, I just recorded a Batty Coat episode, which is a new show that we're doing, and we, we're filming in Sacramento. And I just had the girls out here in Sacramento at a studio where we were recording, and they were in the hair and makeup room, and one of them was, like, um, recording on her, on her Instagram, and in the background, another one was talking about Judy. And so that leaked, and I'm like, y'all all be talking Who was it? I'll give it to you. So it was Christina and Erica in the hair and makeup chair at the set. And Erica was talking shit about Judy. And it hit the BGC blogs like, why is Erica in the background talking shit about Judy? And I'm like, because we all be talking shit, bro. Stop acting like. And then Erica was like, Christina, why didn't you mute it? Because Christina is the, is the Sarah. <laughs> like, so it's Christina. Because see, Christina was giving me very reserved, kind of trying to be laid back <laughs> vibes at the reunion. But then she'd be real spicy in the show and spicy on social media because the social media clips where she was talking about going after Jacob. By the way, she didn't know I wanted to fight her at the reunion over Jacob. <laughs> I was really offended because you know how I feel about Jacob. But right. is she is she different? Was she different at the reunion and then we see now behind the scenes being messy on social media and then on her own social posts? I think Christina, like a lot of us and a lot of the girls, they're up and down. It's the bad girls. You're One second we're friends. The next second bitches are like, I want to f*** your man. The next second a bitch is sliding in your DMs. The next second a bitch is talking about your whole family. The next second she's at your house with your whole family having dinner. Like it's so, it's such a f train wreck that I truly honestly cannot explain it to you. Like it's a sisterhood that is a f up family. Like everybody's not always going to get along, but it's just like the tea really is like these bitches are just delusional. They're delusional.
Well, I will say um, the show, the the reunion show was completely bipolar for me. I walked away needing to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I prayed into the vocation. Is that typical baddies? Yeah, it, it's the baddies. Like, it's just like we, and then the fans are confused half the time too. The fans will like jump on team Natalie. And then the next day, like, we're filming all something all together and doing something else. They're like, you, y'all bitches, like, y'all was just fighting. And then sometimes I think they think it's fake, but it's really like a up and down. It's really like, I don't know, but I just want to get the bag. Like, I just want to make some other money. So I just be like, bitch, like, come on, let's go. Like, I don't, I, like, we, we could fight. We don't have to be the best of friends. We don't have to hang out. We don't have to all get along, but I'm going to get to this bag. So what's up? That's just where I'm at with him. It was evident to me at the reunion that you and Tanisha have had the most experience outside the show as a brand because of how you were able to kind of handle yourself in the show. I felt like you were getting attacked nonstop, um, but you were very patient with your reactions. You were very calculated with your energy. Did you feel like you were being ganged up on uh, unnecessarily? Oh, all the time. And see, but the thing is, is that the audience, like our viewers, our fans, they know Natalie's like, you know, the the tough, bad girl in the sense that they could all come for me and I'll sit there and like literally not even break a sweat. But at the end of the day, I think at this point now, because it's been 12 years of me being on the bad girls, any kind of project, they're like, y'all always come for Natalie. Like it, it's just, but I'm not like over here saying victim, victim, victim. I'm just over here like, when are y'all bitches going to be mad at each other? And leave me the f*** out of it. Like, when are y'all going to be smart enough to stop coming for the boss? When are you guys going to be smart enough to say, oh, I, I got I actually have a problem with this bitch more than I have a problem with Natalie. It's like, it, I feel like for them, it's an easy target to come for the baddest. And, and it's going to make the most noise. So that's what they do. So we talked about Sarah releasing all these different audio clips and then not coming to the reunion. What do you think about her now? Oh, I'm going to be very, very, very transparent here. And I'm going to literally stick to my word. I have had beef with a lot of the bad girls. And I have said a million times that I'm not with a bitch. Like, even when me and Tanisha got into it and it was making Hollywood Unlocked and it was all over the blogs, we still came together and was able to get this money with Baddies ATL. Sarah will never, ever, ever be a part of anything that has to do with baddies, bad girl, bad anything ever again. Because I'm going to make sure that that bitch is doing bad for the rest of her life. Okay? No money. No bag. Whatever the you do at, at Cheetah's in Atlanta or wherever the strip club you be at, stay your ass the over there. Because you're never working on a production that Natalie Nunn or anything that has to do with anything in Hollywood will ever happen for you again. I can promise you that. So basically you're saying she's going to be doing bad all by herself. Bad all by herself, baby. I promise. <laughs> so so um, I, I asked the question not just because of what she released on her Instagram and how she stirred up all the shit at the reunion, but she since then has put nudes of you out on her social media. Um, I had to send that over to Instagram. There's actually a whole focus group now at Instagram dedicated in part to kind of that experience and how you were... Um, how you were... Um, harassed harassed and disrespected in such a public way what did you think about that yeah i mean i had to go as far as reaching out to you and i know you uh, hollywood unlocked has a great team for instagram so thank you and hollywood unlocked for stepping in as well um and the zeus network i mean it was just like the obsession and she's still going to this day she's still every day it's like i live rent free in this broke bitch's head um and it's just it's just like Girl, like, don't you have anything else to do? You're just harassing me. You're stalking me every day. Anything that she's ever had of me, she's, like, releasing it. With If it's pictures of us on trips when we went around the world together, um, you know, like a, a, a shot that, like, when you say, hey, homegirl, can you take a picture of me on the beach? She's releasing, like, bad angles, um, you know, just ugly pictures that she has in her phone. It's like she has a hard drive, a special hard drive that it just says, this hard drive just literally says, Natalie Nunn hard drive. And it's just like, bitch, like, you don't have nothing else to do? It's you, crazy. You, want, you don't want to bring her back for season two and just beat her up? I mean, this is the thing. She's just like, <laughs> it's just like giving her that opportunity and giving her any more, like, 
camera time. It's, that's what she wants. She's fiending for at this point. Like her whole YouTube channel is dedicated to Natalie Nunn. Um, it, her whole Instagram, she's taking it to her OnlyFans. I had her OnlyFans account removed. Um, you know, you can't just start posting content of people without their knowledge or their consent, bitch. Like, you know, and I'm not doing it. My team is doing it because you're not going to make a dollar off of me anymore. Like, it's just, it's over. Okay. So, so is, is the relationship bad enough to where you don't ever want her to work or when you see her, it's on site? Oh, I'll probably never see her again because she's just nowhere where I am. She's, you know, the only time she ever even went out of the country or anywhere in the world or got on a plane was with me. So to be quite frank, it ain't going to be on site because the bitch is a broke ass, bum ass bitch. So she's not going to be anywhere I ever am. And so, I mean, I would say it's on site because, yeah, it would be on site, but I'm just never going to see her. Like, she's... She's in her $40,000 house that she paid for in the way suburbs of Atlanta somewhere, cutting her own trees down because she can't afford a gardener. And, you know, like that's and feeding her goldfish. And she's just a broke ass bitch. Like, period. That's what the fuck this hoe's doing. <laughs> she, has a, she has a goldfish? I don't know anybody. She has a fish tank. She literally goes on. Before her whole page was dedicated to Natalie, she would post cutting her trees down. She would post like, you know, home things around the house. I'm like, bitch, this is why you need a man. Like your man is supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be painting your walls that are hella high up. Like you should not be on a six foot ladder. Like what? And it's just, it just kills me that like <laughs> she, she saves squirrels that fall from her tree and she names them. And wait, a bitch is bored. Wait, like, I really wait, need bitches to wait, stop being this wait, bored. Wait, she names her squirrels? She found a squirrel in her backyard. This was her Instagram before. And I was just like, you know what? Let me put Sarah on baddies because I feel bad for this bitch. Like, she's literally just sitting at the house, saving squirrels. Um, Her, her fish tank, like, had a leak. She came home and the fish were like, blah, 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 flopping in the thing. And so she was like, oh, my God, I got to save my... And she's like recording these things. And I was like, she's bored. Let me give her a job. So we put her on Baddies ATL. Bitch, you not, you gonna be bored the f over there. You gonna be saving a whole lot of other things. All right, so let's talk about Judy um, a little bit because Judy, is Judy on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know what? That's another one, Jason. She got arrested not too long ago. Now, is there a, a plane flying over your house? Over my house? Yeah, do you hear that noise? I think it's the gardener. <laughs> yeah, like I have a gardener. I don't cut my grass, okay? Bad bitch shit over here. Well, why don't you let him go, to, let Sarah borrow? I mean, Sarah could. I've told her that I've literally DM'd her. One time I literally saw her on a six inch ladder cutting a tree in her backyard. And I said, Sarah, you better get down. Why don't you just hire a gardener? She said, I am the gardener. What? <laughs> like, bitch, what? Hell no, nah, it couldn't be me. It definitely couldn't be me. All right, so speaking of Judy again, so do you, is Judy, do, are there mental health issues? And I'm not being funny because I actually grew to like Judy during the during the reunion, and I'm going to invite her here to the show. But uh, is Judy, is she is she on drugs? Is she Is she bipolar? Is she just drunk? What is it? Judy is, I don't really know. Like, the thing is, is when, when she has these, moments that go viral she's um, been on tmz multiple times for you know the neighbors calling the police on her getting arrested um all these situations that happen i'm the first one that is trying to reach out or my mom is reaching out my mother because she has a soft spot for judy over the years as well and i'm just kind of like i want to help but then when i help she does some crazy she goes on these rants when she does drink or whatever she's doing and just starts saying, oh, Natalie doesn't love me. Like what she did at the reunion. Natalie hurts me the most. She's the one on the stage that I'm like, bitch, what are you talking about? That's why I stood up, was going off on her. I'm like, every time something really, really sad happens in Judy's life or something emotional or crazy, I'm the first one calling. I'm trying to bail her out of jail. I'm sending hundreds and dozens of roses to her doorstep. Like, you know, it's like, 
what's going on? Like, I, I'm like, it's, it gets frustrating because it's like the up and down and maybe they are on drugs. Maybe they are alcoholics. I don't really know, but it's like, I do what I can for these girls or, you know, whoever I'm like the closest to or feel that needs it the most. But then I get blamed when like they're hurt or something. Natalie hurt me. I'm like, bitch, what? Well, you did, you did catch a lot of heat at the reunion. Judy opened up about the death of her parents and got really emotional. And there was a moment where you went to her and were talking to her about it. And this is what happened. And fans had a major reaction to it. Take a look. She was like, she doesn't have her mom no more or her dad. And then you were like, that is so we're going to make excuses for her? I never said that. Yes, you did, but but you didn't mean it like that. That is a little bold. She no. came out wrong. But she just what mentioned was, that nobody cared that? about her mother and father, and then nobody yeah. even acknowledged no, that. No, I'm yeah. asking it. Hold no, 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 no. Up. When your mom and dad don't, died, I sent flowers I to talk. your don't house. Don't me and my mom. Why are you lying on me? Why are you lying on me? He sent unlimited to your house. That's not what I said. So what are you saying? What are you saying? Then I did everything for you. Not what I'm saying. You're not even No, listening. time out. I no, did unlimited sh for you. you. Because I'm never telling you. You're playing victim. Nobody sent I sent I sent flowers no. and everything that's to your house. Natalie. Me that's and my mom. That's Judy Queen right there. Like that's like you be lying, bro. So what did you think about that? Did you understand? first of all, did you think that you were being insensitive to her? The thing is, is that I do know that Judy had a really hard time with the death of her parents. And when the, when that happened, like I said, myself and my mother were sending gifts, roses, flowers to Judy's house. And I, I let her know a million times if there's anything that I can do. You, you, don't, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to my mom. So when Judy goes through these moments and tries to pin me out to be this bad person, it gets really, really frustrating to me because I could almost probably you that I was probably one of the only bad girls that was reaching out consistently or sending flowers and sending gifts or when she was just locked up and I seen it on TMZ locked the neighbor called the police on her I was the one trying to bail her out I was the one calling up to the bail bonds place getting an update every day like trying to get her out but there was a whole nother situation she had warrants out it was it's like I can only do so much but when I do try me trying goes unnoticed or me being nice goes unnoticed to these girls. It's just so it's always like, no, we got to make Natalie look like the bad guy. And it does get frustrating. And that's why I went the f off the way I did. Well, well, another person that went off the way you did well, kind of was Sydney Starr, who you brought to the show. Sydney Starr, everybody knows, has been this viral. I'm going to just call her a sensation. I think the sensational part is that nobody has... Um, <laughs> kidnapped her yet because she's caused such a commotion <laughs> on social media where you brought her into baddies is the first transgender baddie and uh her and judy have such an interesting relationship she decided to get up and throw lucky charms at this girl in the middle of the show look this is what happened no it's so an issue you, no this me. is the whole show oh bitch lucky yeah. charms you got bro breakfast on the couch bitch okay. it's lucky stop charms. get the fuck off me you are bitch. a fucking weirdo like what the fuck you weirdo you got served breakfast on the couch you been talking since i got on the stage bitch now how you like how i feel like you don't did Priscilla. touch me you lucky i didn't bring the milk you're like a huge fan it's weird you lucky i didn't bring the milk like <laughs> what did you think of the two of them? Like the whole show, it was just nonstop. Jason, they were friends. They were friends. So the for for like five episodes, I got backlash from the fans saying, "Why did you room her with her? Why did you room Sydney? She's a man with a girl, and Judy's telling you she's uncomfortable." They didn't went on trips together. They didn't stayed in hotel rooms together before. They have been friends for years. They lived in the same city in Chicago. And so I thought, oh, this would be perfect, these two. The mess that that caused, the drama and the victim, I'm a victim, she showed me her this. It was just nonstop. And I promise you, they were friends before. So I was so confused. Now, what I was confused about was, at the reunion, Judy continuously misgendered Sydney, 
And then Sydney continued to say that Judy wasn't transphobic. What did you make out of all that was going on? He needs to go. Hold on, there goes the gardener on the way to Sarah's house. <laughs> yeah, I sent him to Sarah's, but I'm gonna put it on my bill for the month because the bitch probably can't afford it. So, you know, <laughs> broke ass bitch. So what did you make out of that? The two of them, the misgendering, the her talking about um, her having a penis as if that was somehow removing how she self-identifies. What did you make out of all that craziness? I really was confused and the fans were still like, defending judy like here's the thing if someone identifies as a female what is the problem with that person saying i'm female like it was very confusing especially with our fan base because our fan base has been you know so such a big big whole like community that sydney comes from so i'm like i don't understand why you guys are like allowing and being okay with someone misgendering sydney um but it was confusing because they've been best friends for so long so i'm like why are you saying this why are you thinking this is okay to talk about her like that and you guys are friends Mm -hmm. so do you think that judy's transphobic i don't think judy's transphobic but her actions were speaking very loud as transphobic and so i'm like I know you don't like her right now and you're mad at her right now, but you're offending a community of people by the things that you're saying. I know you're just trying to hurt or be mean and say malicious things because that's what a lot of the bad girls do when they're mad. So if you're mad at her right now, I'm just warning you that you're sounding a little bit, you know, transphobic in your tone and what you're saying, your words, but like she's, She's not transphobic. Judy, Judy's a very loving person when she's not all over the place. Like, do you regret bringing Sydney into the show? I don't. I I don't regret bringing Sydney on board. I think Sydney is a big personality. I think she's a lot to deal with. I think um, she's got everybody talking. So you know, as long as she was able to get the audience to say something about her that's really what reality tv is everyone's not gonna like you from a show but um no i think i gave her an opportunity i think um she's done very well with her opportunity she's made a lot of money after the show she's been overly booked a lot of these other bad girls who just want to sit there and be pretty ain't got not one booking after the show sydney has been booked and busy um the the like you know she she's she's did what she was supposed to do she played her part she promoted the show. She never complained. She was one that never texted me, called me, complaining about episodes. Um, she didn't care how she looked, whatever her actions were that she did. She owned up to it. So I think Sydney did a great job, and I and I loved everything about it. Well, one person that didn't like everything about it was Tamar Braxton. Now, she and I both were very different hosts. I think the yin and yang, uh, she was very much a wusa, and I was very much a rah-rah uh, host, but together... You know, we were able to have one common ground, and that was that we thought that Sydney had a responsibility to represent the trans community. They had an exchange on the show, baby. Um, it was Tamar walking off for me. Take a look. Tamar, look at that picture. <laughs> it's not funny. You know, it's it's really disappointing because, you know, for for like on on one hand, you talk about um, being a staple for the LGBTQ community, but then you do stupid ass like this yes and, and get up and talk Designer. out of turn and be disrespectful but you but in turn you want people to be respectful towards you that is a lot for me like you can't ask for it both ways it don't work like that now i feel disrespected now i need like this is like a lot for me tamar you don't know what those girls did to me that house fiery what they've done like it's disrespectful and this is beneath me i cannot do this what did you think about that did you did you understand where tamar was coming from in terms of like addressing sydney and her behavior that non-stop disruptive throughout the whole reunion i think sydney is loud i think sydney is a lot and she does have a lot on her shoulders being the first trans woman coming on baddies um but i think she represented being a trans woman in her own way. So I think she had to fight a lot. 
because a lot of the girls were not very acceptive of her coming. Um, they're like, I thought it was supposed to be only bad girls. So why is she here? So I think she just had to be loud for the sense of that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, well, and I think it was great that you gave her a chance. I mean, for the first time I was able to watch Sydney do her thing. And outside of all of the stunts that I think she did to get known, she actually showed up and did her thing. I mean, she was highly entertaining. The fans were very critical of the reunion. Now, I will say I have watched both episodes twice, not because I'm in it, but be- well, the first time was because I was in it. The second time was really to kind of get all the nuances of the edit. I thought the show was edited perfectly. I thought it was highly entertaining. I laughed my ass off the entire time. Yeah, Lucky Charms were thrown all over the stage. Judy had a meltdown. I had to come in my clothes that I had to come in. My was looking at me like, why did you wear that? Um, and I think it gave what it was supposed to give. You know, uh, Megan can be very sassy and her and Tamar had that moment because t- that's just how Megan is. And, you know, I think it gave what it was supposed to give. So it was, and it was entertaining. It, there was no fights, but, um, you know, the that doesn't mean there won't be any fights on season two. Well, let me ask you, one thing Megan said that I totally agree with, and I wish she would have brought Megan out sooner. Is she said that she didn't feel like a lot of the women on the stage were being honest and that she felt like people were holding back. Did you agree with her? There was a little bit of that. I think Megan was right in the sense that <clears throat> there were a couple of girls that were very quiet. Um, I think, you know, like Sydney who? calling out, like, so that, I was about to say, Sydney calling out Janelle and showing Janelle um, this gremlin picture and this, like, picture of how she l- looked before all her surgeries. Now, for me, I would have been on some, like, the f- bitch and I would have went off. Um, because if but if Janelle got out of do you think but do you think she didn't come for Sydney because had she shown pictures of her when she was a boy, that it would have had a reaction that would have been bigger because of the whole uh don't be, you know, transphobic thing? Yeah, I mean that same, same, but it's still like Sydney had been coming for Janelle the whole damn season while we were filming in Atlanta. She she called her out at the nightclub with thousands of people in the nightclub, said you look like a knockoff Claremont twin. And she was like, you know, the whole season she was just like, you're like you're ugly, you're not pretty, like just called her out. And <clears throat> I just would have expected Janelle to have been at this point like bitch and, you know, went the f in. But that is where I feel like some of the girls didn't really say much and didn't really stand up and like kind of go at it. They leave it for Natalie. They expect me to come out there and be the Jocelyn on her, on her reunion and just start calling these girls off. I'm not going to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you won't come for me and I didn't send for you, then we can go there, but I'm just not going to stand up with all these girls from bad girls and just start going after all of them. That's just not even in my character. Like, so and I'm not going to be like, you wouldn't be here because of me. You are this. I'm not going to do that. Like, that's not me. That's Jocelyn. If you want to see that, watch Jocelyn's Cabaret reunion. Um, but on my reunion, we're going to get to the bottom of things. We're going we gonna, to, you know, have a conversation that we might end up fighting. But Megan was basically trying to say, these girls are not even saying their piece. Like, they're just sitting here trying to be cute. And you saw how I came. Straight backs, sneakers, ready to fight. Well, initially, they had talked to me about potentially hosting Jocelyn's Cabaret, too. And since you brought it up, I know last time we talked about this, uh, you or you you told me that or she had unfollowed you and then you had done a video about it. Now, where are you two in the whole relationship since you're both at the Zeus Network? Are you guys getting along yet or uh, no brunch? For no. You? Yeah, that's a whole thing. And I think the problem really was is because, um, you know, Lemmy had, <clears throat> had got a boat in Miami and invited myself and Jocelyn to go out on a boat day with him. And he dropped the ball on the boat to Jocelyn that the bad girls are coming to Zeus. So when that happened on the boat, her attitude since the boat ride back in January or whatever, when we were all on the boat, the top of the year, she was upset. And, you know, I guess with her in, in her eyes, like Zeus is her network. You know, she was the first girl there. Um, I think in one of her opening acts on the on her Jocelyn's Cabaret, she said something like, this ain't the bad girls club. This is Jocelyn's Cabaret. And then now here come the bad girls to Zeus 
we brought our entire platform. There's multiple girls like coming. We, you know, we have 200 bad girls to choose from. And, 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 and the franchise comes with its own inherent marketing system because your fans and the pages that promote the baddies. I mean, if I say something on Beagle about the baddies, it's all over tw uh, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, we have a serious fan base from from the Bad Girls Club. So Jocelyn was in defense mode from the beginning. She really kind of felt like the Bad Girls coming to Zeus was competition when really, like, you know, you can't really compete where you don't compare in the sense that, like, we are already on, uh, we are already a franchise show that we are handing over to Zeus. So it's not like we got to big, we got to build ourselves. We already are. We're, we're hitting a million no matter what. Wait, like, wait, wait, period. wait. When you say you don't compete where you don't compare, is that Jocelyn can't compete with you guys because she doesn't compare? You cannot compete with the bad girls. I don't, if you want to bring any other show to Zeus, go ahead. You could bring Black Ink Crew. You could bring the Love and Hip Hops. You could bring the Bad Girls Club franchise. I, I, can, I kid you not, is a very powerful platform. Like we were on a very small network and we still brought millions every week to Oxygen. We had all the spinoffs. Every single, every single show we did with Oxygen was another spinoff. Girls got their own projects from it. Like it was a big show and it's just our fans are built in. They love the bad girl. Everybody loves the bad girls. And so... I mean, they've, they've dug up tweets from Megan the Stallion who tweeted when she was not even who she is t t t today saying, someday I want to be on Bad Girls Club. Every single buddy has watched, seen, and loves the Bad Girls Club. <laughs> it's like, period. Um, so it was like when she was starting, when Jocelyn was starting to get really mad about us coming there, I was like, why is she? Then she unfollowed me. She started kind of like indirectly coming for the other girls. Like she was saying things to Seven when we were all in Miami. It just became this big messy thing. And it was just kind of like, like, girl, let it go. We're coming to Zeus. We're bringing the numbers. We're bringing our platform. We've been, a, we've been a, bring the numbers. You're not going to be the only one over there. And that's it. She couldn't accept it. And so she unfollowed me. She blocked me. She sent me a really nasty message before she did that. And I've never aired it out. She sent me, a, it was like this long. And um, then she blocked me. So I'm like, you wrote me a long DM and then blocked me. And I couldn't even respond. And I was like, all right, bet. I'm not going to post it. I don't move like that. I'm not a messy bitch. I have receipts, but I don't post people's receipts. Give it to I don't me. Do Give, that. It to me. Give it to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jason. But it was messy. She she said a lot of nasty, really, really nasty things. She's jealous of you? I think she was just jealous that the bad girls are coming or was coming to Zeus. I think that really, I think where there was competition in her eyes and she saw what we were going to do upset her and i don't know why she was mad at me you know what i'm saying it's not like i was it was like she came for me and then she the billboards went up and let me have baddies on the billboards and then you had bad uh jocelyn on some billboards but it was like really just this messy like back and forth like i don't know mm. whose reunion did you think was better yours or hers I didn't really watch hers, um, but I will say that I saw the clips that were on like your page and I was a little bit just kind of like, I kind of cringed. Um, I know us bad girls don't always see eye to eye and we don't get along, but we do, we do have like somewhere in each and every one of our hearts, a little bit of a soft spot for each other. And um, when I saw, what I saw of her reunion was just like, it was just really belittling. It was a little bit too nasty for me. And it was just a little, just too like over the top. I mean, I don't know. I just saw the clips from your page and I was, I just kind of cringed a little. I know I've cringed at things that the bad girls and we've done too in the past, but that was just like a lot. I was just like, damn, like, like give these girls a little bit of a break. They've never been on TV before. The cabaret girls are just kind of getting their foot into the door. And it was just like, it was a lot. So you moved out of LA and out of the like immediate heart of the industry, but still stay very active. How does it feel like being in the industry, being very known in the industry, living in a city where we don't run into Rihanna at Walgreens? 
um, and 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 still be able to pop in and pop out. Do you like kind of being away from it all? Yeah, I like to come home to my sanctuary, <laughs> which is my home, and just kind of like get a breather, repack my bag, and get on the road for a little bit, then come back, live like, you know, a quiet, peaceful life. I'm, I am a mom. I am a wife. Um, we have, we have regular friends that are not in the industry and then we have our industry friends. Um, and so it, it's, it's, it gives me a good balance. It's, it gives me like a refresh, like, okay, whew, like that was a lot this weekend. And then I can come back home and just like get a brush, a breath of fresh air. Okay. Now I'm getting ready to head to Dubai next week. And I know on the reunion, they made allegations that you're selling in Dubai. I'm going to be honest. If you're going to Dubai, be on your best behavior, Jason, because they do not play over there. So they like, and I, and that's why it's so funny when they, these girls say that they, I don't know where, really, I don't know where that whole thing comes from. When people talk about Dubai, they're like, oh, if you go over to Dubai, you're probably getting on and pissed on by village. It's so weird that they say these things because that country is very, very strict. There's a lot of things that we cannot do here there that we do here, which is even drinking alcohol. Um, you can't just have people up in your hotel rooms. Like they don't like you, you cannot just bring people to your own room. Mm -hmm. It's like against the law there. Like you have to have like passports. They have to scan it into the system. Like it's not uh, a Las Vegas free for all turn up, do what, what you want. Um, so the girls always have something to say. They say Natalie's selling all over the world i make i just like would like them to say natalie is selling billionaire p so it's just like when the girl starts saying oh you're selling bill oh, you're selling p in all these countries to me it's just like i would just appreciate it if the girls say i'm selling rich bitch p okay just you forgot a few words before that rich bitch p all over the world because at this point they just have all kinds of allocations about Natalie, but they keep forgetting to say billionaire, uh, rich bitch. Like what? They're crazy, Jason. I, I kid you. They're kid you not. They're crazy. Well, I know we have mutual friends that are somewhere over there, so I do need to be told where to go when well, I get I out there. I will say this: I am friends with the princess over there. So okay, when you around, me on WhatsApp or something, because I'm going to be I'm there. Gonna for the day. You. I'm going to introduce you. She has restaurants all over the city. She's, I mean, you will be very, very well taken care of. And that's another reason why I like to go over there a lot. I do have a lot of friends there now. Um, Dubai is probably one of my favorite, favorite places to go in the entire world. You're going to have a blast. Well, we, I know you've invited me to go several times. I just, for whatever reason, haven't gone. But I do commit that we will take a trip together at some point. Um, but in the yeah. meantime, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be asking you for that princess. Listen, what yes. is next for you? Like, what else are you working on right now uh, besides that fine-ass husband? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I was like, mm, I better hurry up for this interview before Journey comes back from school so I can get something in real quick. But I'm working on Batty Code, a new project. It's um, a Natalie Nunn production uh, where I'm executive producing it, um, filming it, and um, I'm using some of the bad girls. So we just finished episode one. We do have the lovely Christina. <laughs> we have um, a couple other girls from the franchise. Um, and then we are incorporating some bad boys. Mm -hmm. So I need, I need you on my show. That's what I need. I need you to come over here. Natalie, yeah. I'm not doing reality TV no more. I, I The reunion was a lot for me. It took me back to those love and hip hop days. Of It was a lot. But you did so good. Mm-mm. I mean, listen, they, no problem reading. They love we create something together, you know? Yes, we could do that. But so we got Baddie Code coming. And then, of course, we have season two of Baddies. And it's in a new city. Um, and I'm super excited about that. And some new bitches. Well, listen, hopefully I'll be invited back to the reunion for season two. I had a great time. I appreciate the opportunity. I did my best. Um, and look, if you have not seen the Baddies ATL season or reunion, I'm telling you right now, I don't get free endorsements. I'm not getting paid for this. I literally just watched it again before this interview, part one and part two. It is hilarious. There's so many little nuances. I wish they would have showed me and Christina, I mean, me and Judy hugging at the end. I asked Lemio to give me that clip so I could actually put it out because people think that I walked away hating the girl. 
<laughs> no, you didn't. You did a good job, and you you came to get the tea because you were you were you were confused. You were asking questions like you're like, wait, I thought you hated her. I thought you liked her. Like you were confused. Like you were kind of thrown into something that one second you know the girls are friends, the next second they're not. It's confusing. It's very confusing with the bad girls. But I think with what you had and where we all were at and all the internet drama, the audio leaks, you got the tea. You asked the questions the viewers wanted to know and you did a good job. And you looked fabulous on stage. Thank you. Thank you. And shout out to Tamar Braxton for co-hosting. If, if there wasn't a balance, people would have died that day. And shout out to Lemio Plummer and the uh, Zeus Network for giving all of us Black people platforms to continue to be creative and make money. Nally, I appreciate you always. And um, just so you know, people, this is why you got to have for I called Nally yesterday and said, yo, we got to get on. And she... Look at full glam hair, makeup, just look Period. Like I'll do anything. Listen, I will do anything for my Jason. Stop playing. Thank you. Listen, we'll start with introducing me um, to that princess so I can find out about being there over in Dubai. I <laughs> <laughs> got you. Thank you for having me. I love you guys. Everyone in Hollywood Unlocked. Mwah.